So hi again. Um, this time we're going to look at something a little bit different. We're going to move into Photoshop this time and we're going to look at how to create a triptych. But before we get going on that, a couple of things. If you like what we're doing and you really look, at, look like our videos, then uh, please leave some comments down there and uh, hit the like button. And if you really like it and you want to see more of our videos, then um, then hit the uh, subscribe button, which is down there on the right hand side somewhere. It's just down there. Um, just give it a quick click and you'll be notified of any more videos that we uh, produce online. Um, Somebody, that, somebody that's given us a, a request, and you can you can give us a request through the comments, is uh, is Carol Owen, and uh, she specifically asked us to look at triptych. So tonight we're going to look at how to create a triptych, and um, here's a triptych. Um, this is one that we're going to look at creating this evening. Um, I keep saying this evening; it's this evening for me because it's dark outside. But I have no idea what time you're watching this video, so it could be any time. I shouldn't say this evening; I should be time agnostic. Um, I'll try and do that. Um, so we're going to do create a triptych. Now, triptych is a really simple thing. It's, it's three images presented on one image, effectively, um, on one frame. And uh, to do that, you're going to need three pictures, clearly. But the thing about triptych is each of the images, if we go back to those birds, each of the images has, has kind of got to be... It's got to, got to be good in its own right. It's got to be worthy. It's got to be a worthy photograph because triptych won't work if you've got two really fantastic images or, or one dodgy image uh, effectively and you know these birds aren't fantastic but they're all kind of a similar quality so it, it kind of works um, and you can create a triptych from from a number of things it could be the same color it could be something the same f um, the same kind of format texture um, subject shape it could be anything that links the images um, it could be different uh, views of the same person the same article the same building for example and that and they would build a triptych quite nicely um, and we're going to do that in Photoshop, so let's not, let's not talk anymore. Let's just turn around and, and get going on the, uh, on the computer. So here we are in uh, Photoshop, and uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, create a new document. Now, the document could be whatever size you need it to be, just thinking about your output. Um, so if you're doing something in print, you might want to create something at A3 or A4 or whatever, at 200, 300, 400 dots per inch. Um, but what we're going to do in this situation is we are creating a triptych for a digitally projected use and I know that the 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 digital projection that we use um, runs at 1600 by 1200 so I'm um, going to make sure we're in pixels don't be working in any of these which is inches or centimeters um, and the width is going to be 1600 and the height is going to be 1200 and I'm just going to create that document and there it is um, all nice and white and, uh, and and kind of ready to go now, I'm going to use guides now, and guides um, in Photoshop kind of come up in a, in a, in a pale blue colour, so I don't really want that um, background because I won't be able to see the guide. So I'm just going to um, make sure I'm on the background, I'm going to add an adjustment layer, and it's going to be a solid colour adjustment layer, and I'm just going to make it, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, a grey colour, just so I can see where I'm working. Now, there are many, many, many ways of creating um, a triptych, and, and if you ask 10 people, you'll probably get 10 answers. So I'm going to show you the way that I do it, and I think it's quite a simple way, um, and it's quite flexible. So um, first of all, I thought I'm thinking about um, my images, and uh, I know I've got three images of, uh, of some birds. Uh, let me just show you those um, for a second. Um, they're my export folder. Here they are, and here's some three bird images I've got. Uh, one that's going to be quite long, I've got two that are kind of portraitish. So what I'm thinking of doing here is um, having uh, one that kind of goes there vertically and then two that go horizontally uh, there. So the way I'm going to start doing this is I'm going to head up to view and I'm going to put a guide on. Now if anybody's not used guides before, guides are really quite interesting for doing this kind of work. Um, I'm going to start with a guide layout and then we're going to kind of do it manually. So guide layout um, is, uh, is there. Uh, wow, it's nice and big on the screen. And what I've said is I would like two columns, please. Um, and uh, the gutter size between those columns. So there's my two columns, column one. And my dialog box is sat there in column two. And then the gutter size between them is currently sat at one centimetre. I think that's quite large. So I'm going to drop that down to 0.5 and see how that looks. Mm, still maybe a bit big. Uh, let's drop that down to 0.3. That looks better to me. Um, then what I'd like to do is I've got around the edges, I've got this margin 
Um, once again, it's kind of large. So I'm going to see if I can put those to 0.3 as well and see what those look like. So I'm just tabbing now between those, those columns um, and I'm putting 0.3 in and that kind of looks okay. I've got, I've got two big boxes for pictures there. So I'm going to click okay. So straight away, I can see in this area here, I've got room for one picture and this area here, I've got room for a second picture. And, um, but I know I've got three pictures here and I said I put a vertical one in there and two horizontal ones over here. Now, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to put some more guides uh, in this space here. So the way to do that is run up to the top where your rulers are, click, and then just drag down, and that will bring you down a guide. And I'm going to do this a little bit by eye, um, like a lot of people do. Um, I'm going to let go and then drag it again. And then I know that's at uh, 0 0.4 sorry, 4.85, so if I go to about 0.1, there we go. That is about the same size, and indeed I've got a nice square in the middle. So I've got um, four boxes, um, and what I'm gonna do now is bring in those images um, into those, uh, those boxes, well actually three boxes, one, two, and, and three. Um, first of all, before we do that, we need to just click on the view and make sure we have um, Snap enabled. Um, and then under Snap to, Snap to Guides, that's going to enable us to click to the edge of these guides. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is go into our selection tool and we're going to move to the top left of these guides, click, and you notice it's snapped onto that, onto that guide. We're going to drag down. And you notice there it snaps on. You can see it just click in place there. We want to get close. And then when we're in place, I'm going to let go. Okay, so I've let go there and I've got the marching ants running around uh, where I'm going to put one of my pictures. Now, if I just go back here, I have my birds. So I'm going to literally, it's as simple as this. I'm going to right click the bird. I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to come back into Photoshop and I'm going to go to edit. What I want to do is I paste this image into uh, Photoshop. But if I just paste normally, look what happens. It kind of just goes into um, the screen there, which is not what I want it to do. So let's get rid of that. Control Z. Gone. What I want it to do is I want to paste it into this space here um, because that's kind of an area that I'm, I'm ready to mask. So what I want to do is I'm going to edit. I'm going to paste special. I'm going to paste into. And that will paste into that masked area. If you're really uh, into Photoshop and you like using your keyboard shortcuts, then there is um, there is a, a shortcut there for you. It's Alt Command uh, Space. Sorry, Alt Command Shift and V. Now it's too complex for me, so I just hit that button, and you'll see there a bird has gone straight into that space. Um, now it's big, obviously, so we don't want it that big, and we need to sort of compress it down a little bit. So if we just click on the transform button, we'll get our um, draggable guides there. We need to make sure at this point that we hold the shift key down because holding the shift key down will enable us to drag that smaller and just move it back up a little bit and then drag it in again with the shift key down and as you drag it smaller then um, you're keeping the ratio of the image if you don't hold the shift key let me show you what happens you can kind of squish the bird and make it look like a short and dumpy one or a long and lanky one um, i will just uh, start that again because I wrecked it with um, with that little demo. So I'm holding the shift key down all the time when I'm doing this. You notice that as, as I go over the edge of where I don't want the image, it disappears. And what that allows me to do is to bring that bird kind of into, there we go. So I've got a triptych, which is three images, but because I'm using a bird with a reflection, I'm kind of getting four out of it. Now, there we go. I mean, it's not, a, it's not an amazing picture. It's just an okay kind of bird picture, but it, it's really about demonstrating the, the concept here. So there's my, there's my little bird. I think that might be, I don't know, a chaffinch or something. I don't know, it's something like that. It's a little bird. Um, I'll just uh, hit the uh, arrow key at the top to accept that, um, that image. Next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it again. So I'm hitting my uh, selection tool. I'm going to go for this corner here this time. Click on the top, let it snap on the bottom. We're, we're in. Back to my um, images, there's my second bird. This one's two birds. Uh, I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna copy it again. 
and then back into Photoshop and then edit, paste special, paste into. And there we go. Um, you can see the corner of a bird there. So what we're gonna do now is go to our transform and grab hold of some guides. Um, these are quite large, but I'll just drag them, move them. Remember to hold that shift key down all the time so we don't break the, um, the ratio. And now you're starting to see the birds just appear in that, uh, in that image and I'll frame them up um, as I want them. There we go, how about that? I'll just bob them, maybe make them a little bit small in the frame. There we go, that'll, that'll be fine, I think. Okay, and once again, tick uh, to accept that, uh, that selection. Final one now, we're gonna go back to our selection tool. Um, we're gonna highlight the bottom guides. We're gonna go back to my window that's hiding just behind, pick my third bird, which um, is, uh, I'm going to copy that. I think that's called a sandpiper. I'm not a bird specialist. I couldn't vouch for that. Um, once again, what's happened here? Oh, I've deselected my area. Oh, I haven't. Edit, paste special, paste into. Once again, it's a big image. So when I click on the the, um, the anchor tool, then I've got I've got a lot of space to get to shrink down. Um, and I'll just do that a couple of times. Remember, keep that finger on the shift key all the time. And then uh, we'll get that bird in there and maybe a little bit smaller. There we go. Uh, maybe that's a bit too small. I'll just squeeze it down a little bit. There we go. So there we've got our three images in our, uh, in our frame. Um, but it kind of looks messy because we've got these um, purple lines or these blue lines all over the place. To get rid of those, all we're going to do is going to do Command or Control from a PC and H. And they disappear. And you can do that again. H will bring them back. So there's three images sat in, uh, sat in a triptych. Um, they, they don't look brilliant just yet. Um, uh, so what we need to do is just tie these up a little bit. It'd be nice if there was a little line around there just to separate them from the background a little bit. So let's come over here. Um, to our layers. Um, let's click on the first layer and then there's a little FX button there um, down at the bottom and we're just going to click that and this is where we have the layer the layer um, styles where we can do different things to our layers. So the first thing we like to do I think is, is put a little stroke on there. Let's put a little line around. So let's hit stroke and you see straight away the one that we had selected, um, the layer that we had selected, um, it's got a now a big white line around it and that's the stroke. So we can see here We've got a six pixel stroke in white. Um, six pixels is significantly too big for that. So let's um, let's just grab all of the size. We can make it worse or we can or we can make it better. So let's drop that down to, yeah, I think one pixel actually is, 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 is perfect for that. Um, we could change the color of that, uh, of that as well. We could have it in red or we could have it in black or, or whatever. Let's just leave it in, in a nice white. Um, and then let's okay. We could also add, um, before we press OK, we could also, if we really wanted to, put a, put a shadow on that image. Um, so if you just pop uh, a shadow, uh, I can't see shadow now. Um, outer shadow, there we drop a shadow. We click that and you see it just drops a shadow around that image. Um, personally, I'm not, I'm not a great fan at this moment in time of that, so we'll leave that off. Um, there are lots of other things you could do to that image, to um, that layer, just to make it look a little bit more um, stylistic, as you might say, or make it stand out a touch. So we're not going to do anything else. We're just going to leave a stroke in there and click OK. Now we need to do the same to do the layers. Now you could do that the same way. You could highlight the layer and, 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 and add that um, that style um, layer, uh, layer style, or you could um, you could cheat like I'm about to do. And if we come over to here on our style on our layer and, and right click, then we can uh, copy the layer style. We'll just click that, and we're going to come down to layer two. Going to right click again and we're going to paste that layer style and then in a second now just watch dink there's our white line appeared on there and if we do the same on layer one we're going to paste that layer style here we go there's there's the one on there so there's our three images each now with key lines around them the final thing we need to do is probably just go back to that background image and um and just make sure that we're we're comfortable with um with that, the, the, the background, and we've got a we've got a solid um, we've got a solid color um, adjustment layer on there, so we can move that 
background image to be whatever colour we liked, if we wanted it in blue or green. Um, I have seen trick tips use that colour, not, not the most impressive colour. I've seen them use all sorts of subtle shades, but for me, um, the simplest ones are always the best, and I would probably probably not go for a full black, um, but probably go for um, for these, the darkish grey. What's a no darkish grey? I think there we go. Let's let's pop that in there. Click OK, and um, and there's our image all all done. Now that's one way of doing it in Photoshop. There are many many other ways of doing it, and I just find that's just quite an easy. Um, way of way of creating uh, triptychs. Um, the final thing I think is um, is you know there are tools out there um, that allow you to create triptychs kind of on the fly, um, uh, automated within within the computer. And uh, I think I have one actually on on here um, on my Apple Mac somewhere. There's a uh, turbo collage. So this this will do um, trip, triptych images. Once again, <clears throat> what you have to do with these is you drag it in and it puts your images on, on your script. <coughs> oh, excuse me. You can select your paper size um, or you can create your own um, and you tell it how you want your, your paper to, your image to look. And and you've got a little bit of flexibility around, around doing stuff. Um, you can move the space in between them, you can get rid of corners, you can change the backgrounds, but you don't really have the same level of flexibility that you would have in, in a product like Photoshop. I mean, that looks, to be fair, not, I mean, I've flipped it around the other way, but it doesn't look that dissimilar to, to this image. Um, you know, by the time you've sort of moved um, this bird around a little bit and maybe readjusted the size of, of this one uh, somehow, um, doesn't want to go any smaller than that, um, but yeah, you, you've, you you kind of get the feel that you could you could do that, um, and that's a really quick and simple way. There are there are thousands of products out there like that. That one's called Turbo Collage, but um, I bought that. I think by I got it free. I think um, for a bit of fun. Uh, I think I've used it once um, because I do like to be in control um, of my images. Um, I think all photographers are, are control freaks when it comes to their creative process. So um, Photoshop is, is obviously the best tool, tool, tool for that. So there's our image, um, uh, little birds um, in a triptych. Now, as I say, we, we've gone for a style there of three birds, um, or four birds actually, um, in, in bringing that image together. Um, but you, you can have anything in a triptych. It could, be a, it could be different views of the same person. It could be different views of the same building. I've even seen the same image slipped into three pieces once again, that's quite tricky because if you've got the same image, then each part of that image has got to add uh, value and be a photograph in its own right to really make a triptych work. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope you learned something. And uh, the triptychs are really easy to do. Um, and I, I think I've shown you that now. It's taken us a few minutes, but I think they, they, they are really easy to do. If you've liked this video, please hit the subscribe button down there. Leave us a comment, like the video, or do all that kind of your stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll hope to see you uh, next time. So thank you very much for watching.